Hello everyone and welcome back to This Week in Racing. Today we have a lot to talk about including IndyCar's final race on Detroit's Belle Isle, BMW revealing its new LMDH car, and Acura teasing its LMDH car. And the whole racing world is gearing up for the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So without further ado, let's get started. A couple weeks ago, Peugeot revealed its new 9x8 hypercar in its full racing paint job. The car was numbered as the 93 for the photo shoot and not the 94. Michael Fassbender's Proton Competition Porsche is competing at Le Mans this week using the number 93. Peugeot Sport confirming the car will also make its debut at the 6 hours of Monza in July. On Monday, June 6th, BMW unveiled their new M Hybrid V8 LMDH hypercar. The car will be run by Team Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing in North America and will not make an appearance at Le Mans in 2023. The car made its first appearance in a beautiful BMW camo pattern. It's still not known what will happen to the BMW M4 GT3 GTD Pro program once RLL takes over the hypercar. There are multiple candidates including Turner Motorsport, ST Racing, and Bimmer World that are all based in North America that could field a strong GTD Pro effort with the M4 GT3. Before the reveal, BMW released a teaser photo of its car with the major features like the grille and the front of the cockpit in shadow with light coming in above so you could still see the basic outline and headlights of the car. In my opinion, this is probably the coolest LMDH car concept or real thing. I have a challenge for you, the viewer. If anyone watching this video is skilled with photo editing, I would love to see an example of this car in a historic livery. Or even a modern livery like Turner Motorsport or RLL. If any of you have a concept drawing, DM it to me in Discord, the link is in the description. And make sure to join the official This Week in Racing Discord server as well. This past week, Acura also unveiled teaser images of its ARX 06 LMDH car that looks strikingly similar to its current DPI car. I guess you don't need to change if the design works. A user by the name of Max on the WEC Discord server traced the outline of the ARX06 and posted it to the server, and a user by the name of Zanyan did a full concept drawing. Shifting over to IndyCar with a major silly season development, Andretti Autosport has confirmed that Alexander Rossi will be vacating the seat of the number 27 car and switching over to Aero McLaren SP. It is not known yet if Rossi will be driving the third Aero McLaren car or if he will be replacing Felix Rosenquist in the number 7. This has caused a chain reaction in the IndyCar community as Kyle Kirkwood will move over to replace Rossi and the car will become all AutoNation pink next year. Kirkwood, who had strong ties with the team in Indy Lights, just seemed like the right decision. That just leaves who will fill the seat of the number 14 AJ Foyt racing car, with multiple different driver candidates I will talk about in another video. But now, moving on as teams unload for the 90th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The official test day was this past weekend and teams began to roll into the paddock one by one. An interesting development, both of the Corvette C8Rs competing in this year's race will be yellow. The 64 is the full season car, it will not become silver, and neither will the 63. Team Penske is preparing for its LMP2 swan song at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, moving to Porsche's LMDH program next year. ARC Bratislava has revealed a striking new livery with a lot more purple. The livery was created by graphic designer Daniel Hounsel, who also created the April Fool's Volvo DPI. DKR Engineering showed up with a beautiful Nemo-looking livery on its new Orica 07. This year, WeatherTech Racing did not make the last second switch to GTE Pro, remaining in GTE Am with its 79 Porsche 911 RSR. And Graf arriving with its ELMS car numbered 40. The car will be numbered 39, however, for the race. Amongst all this, it was the number 7 Toyota topping the time charts overall, with all of its drivers minus Sebastian Buemi driving the car. Peretta Autosport is preparing for a return to IndyCar. At this weekend's Grand Prix of Road America, Peretta Autosport will make its long-anticipated return since competing in the 2021 Indy 500 with Simona Di Silvestro. The car will be backed by KiwiCo and technologically supported by Ed Carpenter Racing. 
There are only three races planned for this program, Road America, Mid-Ohio, and the street course at Nashville. Beth Peretta, however, says that they will do more races if there's enough funding. So if the team ends up competing at Iowa or Gateway, that means there could be four Ed Carpenter Racing-supported cars on the track. A very interesting LMDH announcement regarding Lamborghini. Lamborghini has finally announced who will make their chassis and bodywork for its 2024 LMDH program, and that manufacturer is Ligier finally getting an LMDH commission. Lamborghini's sister brand within the Volkswagen Group, Porsche, has gone with Multimatic as its chassis and bodywork manufacturer. Audi was due to go the same route as Porsche, but that program ended up being cancelled in favor of an F1 entry in 2026. It will be interesting to see how competitive this car ends up being, as Ligier has ended up lagging behind its competitors in LMP2, with only one JSP217 competing at the 24 Hours of Le Mans this year. Here are some other quick headlines. Road America has announced that the track will be repaved later this year, and a 24 Hours of Le Mans spotter guide is now available on DailySportsCar.com. Let's move on to this week's winners across the world. Joey Logano won the NASCAR Cup race at Gateway Sunday. On Saturday, A.J. Allmendinger went last to first in Portland. Corey Heim won his first Truck Series race at Gateway. Linus Lundquist swept the Indy Lights weekend in Detroit. Will Power took the IndyCar win in Detroit in Chevrolet's 100th win since rejoining the IndyCar Series in 2012. That's what happened last week. What about this week? IndyCar, as I mentioned earlier, is heading to Road America. NASCAR is heading to the Toyota Save Mart 350 at Sonoma. The Michelin Le Mans Cup is having its annual Road to Le Mans race. The Ligier European Series has its doubleheader at Le Mans, all accompanying the 90th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans on Saturday, June 11th. So, that's this week in racing. Thank you everyone for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, make sure to subscribe. Join the official This Week in Racing Discord server down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my second channel if you are a diehard meme enthusiast. Let's try and get this channel to 50 subscribers as this is my first step to conquering the craziness that is the YouTube algorithm. And also make sure you hit that bell button so you don't miss any auto racing news. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And don't miss Le Mans 2022, The Grid in Full, premiering on YouTube Thursday, June 9th, 2022 on This Week in Racing.